so I'm just going to talk to y'all about full circles and chain reactions. For some reason, webs, bridges, links, all things that fall under the interconnected category really fascinate me. Chain reactions and full circles are particularly appealing because they relate to my, my life. So I guess the first chain of this metaphysical circle began when I was around five years old. My mother handed me a notebook and told me to write down anything that I felt like I couldn't say out loud. My first chain began with finding my voice through journaling and writing. Fast forward through about five or six more years of poverty and you'll arrive at the second chain link, transferring halfway through sixth grade to another school called Hendersonville Middle. My fireball of an English teacher, Mel May, marched my report card to the principal and showed her my grades. She pointed out my 100% average and demanded that I be placed in the academically and intellectually gifted program. This brings me to my third link, Ms. Schneider's AIG class. Through this class, I was haphazardly introduced to poetry in all forms, including slam poetry. Through Ms. Schneider, I met a longtime inspiration of mine, Glennis Redman, who later became my mentor. Through Ms. Redman, I was introduced to the slam poetry scene in Asheville, and that story, that story snowballs into a different, simultaneously amazing direction that we'll come back in later. But going back to my second and third links, Ms. May and Ms. Schneider, both of these English teachers encouraged me to look into the early college high school program over at Blue Ridge. I put off their insistent suggestions until finally in eighth grade, I agreed to at least submit an application. And to my surprise, I was accepted. So began my fourth link, tackling college straight out of middle school. Fast forward to my fifth link. It was October 28, 2013, a few months into my sophomore year, and my mother and I were homeless. We went to family, went to friends, and were turned out again and again. We went from motel to motel, nothing like this gorgeous place here, and until it was nearly routine to pack up and relocate as soon as we got comfortable. In one place, the roaches drove us out before the cold could. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't want to burden any of my friends or my teachers with my domestic struggles, so I endured homelessness and stayed on top of my academics. And this went on for a year. I walked to various late night restaurants to access Wi-Fi to turn in homework assignments. I got a job to help pay the motel bills. I started to think about giving up in several contexts. Which brings me to my sixth link, finally cracking. I had an anxiety attack at school, which led to telling my counselor everything, which led to bringing in another teacher, a pastor, and county reinforcements. All of the teachers at early college supported me through this. Their kindness ranged from, ranged from polite smiles to backpack care packages to Coach Mack literally packing up all of my stuff and driving me to my host family, which brings me to my seventh link, moving in with strangers kind enough to be my host family. The agreement was that I moved in simply for the sake of having a sense of stability until I graduated. Little did I know that these people, the King family, would be amazing and selfless human beings. Everything fell into place afterwards. September of 2014, Ms. Hill and Ms. Willingham sat me down and told me I would graduate in the spring of 2015. That was a full year earlier than originally planned. I received a full no tuition scholarship to Berea College. Thank you. And I will move in as a mountaineer this August. My mother is saving up to move to Charlotte, go figure, once I leave for Kentucky. Everything haphazardly fell into place through full circles and chain reactions. And of course, there were several small links working in between the seven, eight, or however many links I just listed. The point is, I am blessed. Even though at times I took my anger out on God and myself, I am blessed. I am standing here a high school graduate and a college graduate with the highest collegiate education in my immediate family. 
I am standing here speaking to y'all of my struggles in the past tense. There was a point. <laughs> there was a point where I thought I'd never get to reference any of this as my past. Yet here I am, thanks to God, my mama, my teachers, and early college. So in closing, I'd like to perform a slam poem. I told y'all that would come back. <laughs> it's entitled Home. We find more stability in cardboard boxes than in mailing addresses. Seeing everything packaged and labeled just makes more sense. Our minds are more at ease when the lock clicks on the storage unit. We didn't realize how much glass we consisted of until we heard the rustling of newspaper bandages and counted how many boxes were labeled fragile until we stood frozen at foreign threshold, all burning sand and swallowed gems, gazing upon each other's pride, tracing broken wine glasses with indignant stares. And you hid your fissures for as long as you could until a crack split the tenor in your voice and failure spilled from your lips. You fear that being homeless makes you a bad mother. That residency solidifies success as if 445 West Dermid, 80 Hope Circle, Rainbow Motel, and South Wind Motel were more haven than hell, but it is not coincidence that mama and home are synonymous. It is not coincidence that I look to your feet for foundation. See, I find home in the depths of your dimples, in the way they pull back the curtains of your mouth to reveal a grin, encouraged by the prayers perched on your tongue. I find home in the way that you don't always have a solution, but you always have an answer. There was always consistency burrowed in your arms, along with the determination to keep going. I find strength in the way that we compacted five years into 14 feet, filling every square inch with our it's gonna be all right mentality. I find home in the sense of your work clothes, smelling like 12 hour shifts, six days a week, seven P to seven A in health complications. I find peace in your vocal lessons and the way you teach me by example how to cry and sing in the shower. Let the off-tune tone of my tears create a musical. Let each droplet be sheet music. Let God orchestrate anxiety into a symphony. There is home in the way that you take the time to smile more for me than for yourself, in defiance of circumstance, in rebuttal to urgency, daring life to throw something else at us. And on those dark nights, when the doubts start creeping in, remember that home is not tangible. Home is not failure or accomplishment. It is not an address. It is not rent. It is not eviction. It is not dictated by housing authority. Home is the fact that I spent 10 months inside your belly, refusing to leave until I was forced and maintaining that mentality till this day. It is the way we seem to feed off each other even though the umbilical cord was severed long ago and mama, that is one thing they cannot take away from us. You still fight for me, shelter me from every storm. There is no failure in that. You are heart, therefore you are home. You are all I know for us. Being home, is being stubborn enough to laugh, suitcases and jokes in hand, and walk out into the cold without looking back. Thank y'all. Put down the house, girl. <laughs>